Chapter 11, Planet Bound Summary The first step in getting home Learning how to fly this thing After bringing their alien friends up to speed on their conversation with Shaky Basic, the two kids said they supported the students' plan to take down the trafficking ring, though all they themselves wanted to do was go home. If the opportunity presents itself before that happens, they won't hesitate to help in any way they can. Izuku appreciates the sentiment, but all he really wanted was to keep them safe from any further harm. Let them enjoy the rest of their shattered childhoods. But for now, that would have to wait. With loose plans of the future taken care of, they turn their attention to the present. More specifically, the fact they were still drifting in an escape pod. The initial thrusters for the ship had only lasted a few minutes, and ever since they had been drifting through the cosmos. May was the first to breach the topic, excitedly asking, So, can anybody fly this thing? Silence emanates from the Terrans, while the Orsiers just stand there without a clue to what's being said. You know how fly? May asked again, though this time directed at their alien companions. No, Fastel sighed. Before we were captured, we had never even been off-planet. Now that was concerning. Izuku looked at the endless black void surrounding them and thought to himself that they had, just maybe, not thought this whole plan through. But there was no use thinking about that now. All they could do was focus on trying to figure out how to fly this thing. Denki stepped forward with a semi-confident smile on his face and settled down into the control seat. His fingers hovered over the various screens and panels, careful not to actually touch anything. Well, let's give this a try. Can't be too different from video games, can it? Denki says. Yes. Yes, it can. Katsuki stated blandly, but it was too late. Denki gripped the steering and pushed down like you would do to control a plane. The pod suddenly jolted forward, sending the unsteady humans and lightweight ulcers to the floor. Denki immediately stood up and just said, Never mind. After looking around the ship for a bit, May found a thick booklet that appeared to be an instruction manual. It was all written in basic, but the friends, their friends were able to give them a good enough translation for Denki to actually start learning how to fly the ship. How it was decided that Denki was their unofficial pilot, Izuku didn't know. By the time Denki had a decent handle on the ship, hours later, everyone was nauseous and shooting half-hearted daggers in Denki's direction. It was good that they were in such an empty patch of space. Not that those were very difficult to find, because Denki's learning process included quite a few jolted starts as well as wild maneuvers. After fully going through the instruction manual, they were able to pull up the ship's scanners. It was a short race range scan and only really had information on whether or not a planet was hostile or habitable, but it was good enough. They needed to find a place to land, especially after discovering that they did, indeed, have limited oxygen. After going through the nearby planets, the group decided on one with lush forests to land in, and many moderate-sized towns they would be able to travel to. The planet would take a full cycle to get to, but the group could wait. They had waited so long in those small cages, they could wait a little longer to truly be free. While the group was searching for the pod's instruction manual, they also found some basic survival supplies. There was enough food and water to last them two cycles if they cut back a little. Turns out the recommended capacity for alien escape pods is five, not eight. They also found two survival blankets and a first aid kit, which could come in handy in the future. The planet they were headed to was supposedly on the warmer side, but who knows how cold the nights could get. The most notable thing they had found was a tablet-like device that was apparently standard on all emergency life pods. It had basic survival information on it, as well as a translator for most species' languages in the Galactic Alliance. 
While it wouldn't have any human language, it could certainly help the humans get a better grasp on BASIC. The group flew for the entire next cycle. The pod didn't have a lighting cycle, but it did have a clock to help them keep track of time. While the kids were excited to be able to stand up and move around again, the little physical activity they had already done had left them borderline exhausted. A few hours in, when Danky appeared to be getting tired, Azuku approached his friend and offered to sub out. An appreciative look washed over Denki's face as he silently got up so Azuku could sit down. Denki spent the next few minutes explaining the controls and supervising Azuku while he got a feel for it. Azuku was nowhere as good as Denki, but he felt like this was something exhilarating yet calming about flying the ship. He felt like he could do this every day. He let his mind wander far and wide. The task of flying the ship helping to drown out the regular stream of self-hating thoughts that often filled his head when he was left alone for too long. He thought back to their escape only hours before. Someone had been attacking the trafficker's ship. Izuku had just about glimpsed a lone spacecraft laying siege to the massive vessel as the escape pod shot away from the ship. But that left him with the question of who. Who was attacking the ship, and why? There was almost no way that one ship could have taken down the veritable fortress of a spaceship. So what was their goal? Izuku let his mind roll over the question in his head for a while, never coming to a concrete conclusion. So he just continued to let his thoughts drift. But as the hours ticked by, he eventually had to swap out with a now well-rested Denki before going to rest himself. They eventually reached a planet, so similar, yet so different from Earth. Fluffy clouds swirl in the upper atmosphere with a slight purple tinge. The vast majority of the planet's surface seemed to be covered in dense, pinky-green forests. A few deep blue bodies of water can be seen around the planet, none of which could be called an ocean. While the planet was also significantly smaller than Earth, the vast land masses certainly no larger than North America and South America in all. The Terrans just stare as they pick out all the differences between here and Earth. A deep longing for their home planet, with everything they have ever known aching in their chests. But they can't focus on that as Denki starts their descent. Flying a spaceship in the vast abyss that is space is one thing, but landing it on a densely forested planet while going hopefully undetected was another. All the pod's passengers braced themselves as they breached the planet's thin atmosphere. The vibrating of the vehicle did not instill Izuku with the utmost confidence in their rapidly approaching landing, but there wasn't much he could do at this point. The ship touched down with a lurch and a bang. Hissing could be heard from the pod's hull, and Izuku doubted it would ever fly again. But it had done its job. They were off the trafficker ship, and on some alien planet with civilization nearby. Now, all they had to do was figure out how to get home.